government culminating in our decision uh, to exit NASA and welcome a new formidable coalition. Kalonzo Musioka's Wiper Democratic Party movement officially pulls out of the National Super Alliance. What next? Kenya and South Sudan abolish visa requirement for their nationals traveling to either country. Thank you for joining us. Lensa Odingo is in charge of our sign language docket. Purity Musa is away in Dhaka, Senegal. Thank you very much for joining us. Straight to our top story. Madira member of parliament, Rigadi Gashagwa, was today slapped with a cash bail of 12 million shillings, a bond of 25 million shillings, and a surety of a similar amount to secure his release from police custody. Following his arrest last Friday, you remember he's facing six charges of fraud with the main one being receiving proceeds of crime to the tune of seven billion shillings his lawyers uh, decried the high bond and bail terms for the terming his arrest and weekend detention as politically instigated sarafina chiangoma opens our coverage this monday with that report Madira Member of Parliament Rigadi Gashago was arrested last Friday and held in police custody over the weekend was on Monday morning presented before Chief Magistrate Lawrence Mugambi. Gashago faces six charges amounting to over seven billion shillings which include conspiracy to commit an offense of corruption, fraudulent acquisition of public property, money laundering, acquisition of proceeds of crime and conflict of interest. The court granted Gashago a cash bill of 12 million shillings, a bond of 25 million shillings, and a surety of similar amount. Terms which Gashagwa's defense counsel, led by senior counsel Kiyoko Kilukumi, termed unreasonable. Why were they arresting their accused on a Friday, 3 a.m., just to keep him at punishment? We strongly feel that uh, the bond terms have been granted by the court were too high and, and uh, we want to urge the courts going forward to ensure that uh, they adhere to the key tenets of uh, bail's applications. We do not want the court to be a captive or under the capture of the state and therefore I think that in future we would expect more reasonable applications. And we hope that the judiciary stays away and avoids being abused and used by the executive to punish their perceived enemies. His lawyers and political supporters now read malice in the current wars. That we are seeing a series of what are political persecutions, not criminal prosecution of corruption cases. The astronomical figures that you've had in court this morning are nothing other than DCI Kinoti's way of trying to raise bail, uh, high bail terms, as uh, have been said by the lawyers. Even the fact that they arrested him on Friday, kept him three days in, I think it is all abuse of, of power and abuse of office. So there was no urgency to pick him up on a Friday. Obviously it was intended to ensure that he's punished by being held over the weekend. You can imagine, it's been two years since he recorded the statement, but even to date, in court, what is needed to be uh, provided for to the defense wasn't given. He made no yote to make what to Nayelewa. Nahi made no yote regate Gashagua. Nikama Ida Nirikua Nayo, Kama Ida Moses Kuria Rikua Nayo, Kama Ile, almost all the members of our team, Wamekua Nayo. The Defense Council called on the Directorate of Criminal Investigation, the Director of Public Prosecutions and the Court to be independent and follow the law on all procedures. Well, that report was brought to us by Sarafina Roby and not Sarafina Cheng. As I'd mentioned earlier, let's move on to education matters and COVID-19 situation in the country is a major concern for parents as schools reopen for the 2021 academic calendar. And while the government has done its part to ensure COVID-19 protocols are adhered to in schools across the country, parents say 
they remain cautiously optimistic on resumption of in-class learning. Meanwhile, needy but bright students in various parts of the country have benefited from education scholarships. Today marked the beginning of a new academic calendar as some 15 million students across the country resume school under the revised calendar adjusted as a result of the COVID-19 disruption. But as classes resume, the reeling effects of the pandemic are bearing heavily on both schools with the influx of students and on parents who now find it hard to pay fees. <laughs> So the first challenge Kubo. With the surge of COVID-19 infections in the country, Kembu Governor James Nyoro called for strict adherence to the prevention protocols, more so now that the schools have reopened. The surveillance team will be active, particularly when the schools are open, uh, so that in case of any incidents, and we have had incidences in schools where we've had an outbreak of COVID-19, uh, but we've been able to work very closely with the Department of Education and the national government and also with our health department uh, to, gain, to contain the situation. Nyoro spoke during the awarding of the secondary school education scholarships by Family Bank Foundation to 10 needy students in Kembo County. A similar gesture was extended by Kenya Commercial Bank Foundation to students in Kericho County. The students also received 25,000 shillings each for shopping. In Kisi, parents decried inflation and the effects of the pandemic on their finances, making catering for their children education an appeal task. <laughs> At Mwihoko Ward in Roiro constituency, parents celebrated the opening of the national government-constructed Mutuya Primary School. It would decongest Mwihoko Primary School, the only public school in the entire ward that was as far as 8 kilometers away for some pupils. Kwanza wawa watoto wadogo, walikuwa hawezi tembea kutoka hapa mpaka pale shule ile ingine, lakini kwa wakati huu. Kwa fuzazi tumefurahia, tunasema mungu wa mbariki na azidi kutuletea ma maendeleo mengine. Caroline Kamau reporting for the Prime Edition. All right, let's stay with education matters. Only 27% of teachers are fully vaccinated against COVID-19 as learning resumes in schools countrywide. This is according to a report by the Teacher Service Commission. The report also points out lack of sanitizers across schools in remote areas as a serious challenge to smooth learning. Yusuf Farah puts that story into perspective for us. A report by the TSC shows that only 27.1% of teachers in the country are so far fully vaccinated. Let me use this platform to appeal to all our teachers to accept to be vaccinated. As COVID-19 is not sparing anyone, for instance, we have so far lost 73 teachers uh, to the virus since it was first reported in the country. The report that sought to find out the level of preparedness among educators further puts at 99% teacher awareness about the Ministry of Health COVID-19 guidelines. Quality Assurance in Standard Director TSC Dr. Ruben Dambiri however pointed at lack of sanitizers in remote places and their costly nature as possible challenges to the smooth learning. Schools also prefer use of water and the soup. That is also the other preference why they are not using sanitizers. They are also considered an, as a health hazard and therefore there is also the fear of learners abusing the sanitizer. Meanwhile, a TSC has trained 90,000 teachers in the competency-based curriculum. I urge school administrators to quickly settle down the new staff and ensure they attend to learners in the academic year that is heavily constricted uh, to recover the time lost last year. TSC said that the National Treasurer has allocated funds for competency-based curriculum training. The National Treasury has allocated uh, uh, 1 billion shillings for further CBC training to ensure a smooth implementation of the curriculum. While acknowledging the fact that full resumption of learning might be met with a number of challenges, the Commission has expressed its confidence in readiness for the 2020-2021 fast term period, but are still calling on the strengthening of measures in mitigating the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. Yusuf Farah reporting for the Prime Edition from KRCD.
Nairobi. Very well, let's now shift gears and move into the world of politics. Kalonzo Musiokas, Wiper Democratic Movement, has resolved to exit from the National Super Alliance, NASA. Wiper, according to its leader, is now reaching out to like-minded parties as it focuses on building on one Kenya alliance. The resolution comes amid an attempt by ODM party to share funds from the political party's kitty with its affiliate as part of the pacification. Kevin Washira is on that political beat. <laughs> The Wiper Party National Executive Council held a closed meeting to forge a way forward in the wake of political realignments ahead of 2022 general elections. The Kalonzo Musioka led party resolving to exit NASA and focus on building the One Kenya Alliance. We have had a very useful consultation as Wiper Democratic Movement this evening culminating in our decision uh, to exit NASA and welcome a new formidable coalition which coalition in my view will be spearheaded by the One Kenya Alliance the Wiper Party, which is currently in a partnership with the ruling Jubilee Party, is however reaching out to ODM to join the One Kenya Alliance, but under a new pact. The Wiper Party is the second party to declare interest to exit NASA after ANC, but none of the above has written to the Registrar of Political Parties to make the exit official. I'm basically extending a hand of friendship to everybody, including ODM. Because ANC and Kano and, and, and Fort Kenya are together with us. I want to specifically welcome ODM to be part of the new formation. When you look at the, the outfit, the, 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 form, the formation that is coming out, this one Kenya alliance, it is just uh, NASA uh, minus ODM. And um, I can see that with the time, this... Uh, one Kenya Alliance might even become a, a different outfit with another another player entering the the, the fray, and I don't I am not writing out that um, ODM will be part of this uh, uh, this formation. The resolution, however, comes as ODM party agreed to make peace with its NASA affiliates by sharing money from the political party's fund kitty, Kevin Washira. Prime Edition. Well, as we head towards the 2022 general poll, it will be interesting to see how political alignments take shape. Let's move on. Kenyan ambassador to the United Kingdom, Manoa Esipisu, says President Kenyatta's visit to the European country this week is aimed at strengthening the Kenya-UK strategic partnership. Esipisu said during the visit, President Kenyatta will hold bilateral talks with UK's Prime Minister Boris Johnson to review other areas of mutual partnership. Speaking in London ahead of the President's tour, Esipisu said the highlights of the Kenyan leader's visit will be co-chairing of the Global Education Summit with Prime Minister Boris Johnson. The envoy pointed out that the aim of the summit scheduled for July 28th to 29th is to raise funds for investment in the education of millions of vulnerable children around the globe. The aim of that summit is to raise uh, funds for education, especially for vulnerable uh, people around the globe. Uh, the, the, the target for this uh, fund, uh, fundraiser effectively is five billion uh, dollars. Uh, a lot of this money has already been raised along the last few months as we, as, as you might be aware, the president has been uh, busy talking to fellow heads around the world, urging them uh, to put uh, the, the, the money where their, their, their mouth is to 
take action to protect their budgets for education, to take action to increase their budgets for education, and to take action to fund specific uh, areas of ed education that they have previously lagged behind. The Kenyan diplomat indicated that during the visit, President Kenyatta will hold bilateral talks with Prime Minister Johnson to review other areas of the Kenya-UK strategic partnership. It does include uh, security and defense, it, regional security specifically, because uh, uh, we, li we as Kenya, we live in uh, a fairly tricky region and, uh, and we collaborate with our partners around the world, including the United Kingdom. Uh, to deal with this security imperative. The strategic partnership, according to SAPSO, is a broad framework for cooperation which covers a wide area ranging from trade to security. The envoys say the two leaders will also discuss climate change, especially in the Kenya-UK agenda for the forthcoming Conference of Parties in Glasgow and the progress of the Big Four agenda. Uh, the president will also be attending to, uh, to, to, to issues around his Big Four agenda, uh, meetings uh, that will culminate in uh, the, the signing of an agreement between the Nairobi International Finance Center and the City of London. Uh, that's a, an important one on the, on, the, on the agenda, as well as the partnership that the President himself has been driving between the University of Manchester and Christie uh, Cancer NHS here in the UK with Kenyatta University. Uh, teaching and referral hospital for the setting up of, of, uh, of a diagnostics from diagnostics to treatment of cancer ex cancer center of excellence uh, in our country. President Kenyatta is expected in London on Tuesday. Reporting for Prime Edition, I'm Jackie Wambiru. Well, Ambiru's story brings us to yet another report where the government has waived the visa requirement for the citizens of the Republic of South Sudan who hold a valid passport issued by the government. Subsequently, the Republic of South Sudan has reciprocated by waiving visa requirements for Kenyans wishing to visit their country. Karo Kamau reports. In a statement from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the waiver of visa requirement for citizens of the Republic of South Sudan takes effect immediately. The ministry says, further in line with the EAC Common Market Protocol, the workers of the two partner states will be allowed to accept employment within the territory of each other. The statement further says the move will also enhance cultural ties and strengthen the economy of both partner states by encouraging free movement of persons and labor. According to the Kenya's foreign ministry, the two countries will sign an agreement to this effect in the near future. Well, that's a report by Karo Kamal. They are voiced by our very own Beatrice Gatonia. Let's move on. Kenya Forest Service has kicked off an ambitious three-year program to save the mangrove forest that has been adversely affected by human activity along the Kenyan coastline. The plan seeks to create another 40% of the country's mangrove forest and has kicked off with a planting of 30,000 propagates at the Jomvu area in Mombasa Creek. The Kenyan coastline is estimated to hold over 10,000 hectares of the mangrove ecosystem. 40% of the ecosystem is in ruins, spelling doom to the oceanic life. Urban encroachment, illegal harvesting, as well as the illicit rearing are some of the contributing factors to the wiping out of the forest. Because of activity of the community getting into the mangrove all the time, even the natural regeneration is not happening as fast as it is supposed to happen. Our aim is that by 2027 we should have dealt with the issues of all degraded areas. But the beauty thing is that once we remove human inter inter intervention or human uh, activities within the mangrove ecosystem, the natural regeneration also can support. Once it is back and fully regenerated, uh, communities nearby can sustainably use it because it continues to grow on its own 
so long as it's not over harvested. The program is being implemented by the Kenya Defense Forces through the Kenya Forest Services to plant over 3,000 propagules as they sensitize the public on the need to protect the degraded ecosystem. In the last one year, we have been able to plant about 10 million uh, propagules of mangrove, and the last two years in total, we have been able to do about 16 million. Environment and Forestry CAS Mohamed Elim, who officiated the event as part of the International Day for Conservation of the Mangrove Ecosystem, urged the community to tap into the potential that lies in mangrove farming. I must congratulate uh, the communities of Lamu because they have kept to the traditions and therefore they are sustainably harvesting. We must be able to maintain our mangrove ecosystem, we must be able to maintain our coral reefs and seaweed. They combinedly work together as a very strong breeding grounds for the fisheries. Juni Karisa Mbele from Mombasa County for the Prime Edition. You're watching KBC Prime Edition, our first break at this point, but we're going to come back with more stories that include the day's business as well as sports. Stay with us. The biggest president in the world, and in Kenya especially, Niamani. What was in a new two president? Kwanzu wa ningani amani yetu tupendani. Kupata skizo tunia karao na DJ, bonyezo star 811 star 967 hash. Hey, Raya, hey, hey. Raya, hey, hey. Raya, please do not confuse the government. Usianza kufinya ile kitu inasema, more fire. Ama ile ya, the roof, the roof is on fire. Ama unaza kusema, we are killing this party. Ama the party is just the boom. We are having a blast. No, 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 no. We were chase a musigi and just be fitland. Enjoy. Ama namna kani. Sawa, sawa. Over and out. Bonyeza star. 811 star 967 hash star 811 star 967 hash this is where it all began as the mother of broadcasting in kenya you can trust kbc to bring you authentic news and programs to your living room as kbc we take pride in our unrivaled heritage as kenya's trusted national broadcaster Commanding over 92% digital television signal coverage of our country, 23 radio services that cut across our entire language spectrum, a national, regional and international digital presence backed by the most experienced and top-notch broadcast professionals in the industry. A very good evening to you. The New Look Kenya Broadcasting Corporation is truly ahead of the pack. Turn to the mother of broadcasting in Kenya for stories that resonate with our identity, our aspirations as a people united in purpose. Real stories of hard work, of passion, of creativity, of big dreams. Stories that cement our nationhood. Stories that bring us together as one. Well. We take pride in our shared heritage and destiny. KBC. Informing, educating and entertaining Kenyans as one nation. KBC. Kenya's listening. Kenya's watching. Welcome back. Of course, we care about your views. Speak to us, our social media platforms at KBC Channel 1, hashtag Prime Edition. Let's look at an, up, an, an item here, an update on the COVID-19 situation. And the um, country Monday recorded 550 new cases of COVID-19 from a sample size of 4,087. This translates to a 13.5% positivity rate. The new figures bring 
to 197,959 total confirmed positive cases. The Ministry of Health says that seven more people have succumbed to the disease, bringing the cumulative death toll to 3,872. This as 786 patients recovered from the virus in the past 24 hours. Globally, 194 um, 194 million 321 and 91 people have cumulatively tested positive for the virus with the death toll standing at 4 million 162,590 worldwide now chief justice martha kome wants a case filed by katiba institute seeking to compel President Uhuru Muigai Kenyatta to appoint the 41 judges thrown out. Kome, who was alongside the Judicial Service Commission, which was an interested party, argued that the case has been overtaken by events, as President Kenyatta has since appointed 34 judges from the least forwarded to him by the commission. Katiba Institute in a case filed at the High Court wanted President Uhuru Kenyatta sanctioned for failure to appoint the 41 judges. The Institute also wanted the courts to declare the judges duly appointed since the President had failed to appoint them within the 14 days appointment window. Katiba Institute had named the President, the Attorney General and the Chief Justice as respondents while the Judicial Service Commission and other three groups were enjoined as interested parties. Chief Justice Mother Koome and the Judicial Service Commission now want the case dismissed as it has been overtaken by events. Kome and the JSC argue that the appointment of 34 judges from the list of 41 had rendered the case impotent, saying that the matter was also pending in the Court of Appeal. The Chief Justice also argues that the role of a CJ and that of a Judicial Service Commission is of functus officio to mean that the decision on the 41 judges was final and that the ball was in President Uhuru Kenyatta's court. Ashanza Law Court has granted homicide detectives 21 days to conclude investigations on the murder of Dutch businessman Hammond Robenhurst and his security guard Evans Bokoro. Two suspects who were arrested on Friday will remain in police custody as investigations intensify on the alleged execution of a 55-year-old businessman over a month ago. Timothy Omondi and Mary Wakesa, the widow's alleged colleagues turned crime partners, were nabbed after the widow's confession. John Jacob Curia, Prime Edition. From the corridors of justice to our county roundup, a man has been shot dead by a known assailant in Marura area, Sweetwaters in Laikipia East constituency. 40 year old Festus Gakuo was sprayed with bullets outside his shop by people in a vehicle who fled immediately after the incident. More of this in our county news roundup. According to the residents, a car appeared at the businessman's shop where he was selling some charcoal to a lady, shot him four times and fled towards Nanyuki town. The man died on the spot. The motive behind his killing is still unknown. Na mimi nataka serikali ingilie kati wafanye uchunguzi na especially watumizi CCTV ambazo ziko hapa just next to the crime scene ili watu wa Marura waache kuwa na wasiwasi na wapate haki yao. Meanwhile, two families whose children were abducted and murdered in Nairobi County by a suspected serial killer have received a total of 148,000 shillings, which is a personal contribution from county commissioners in the country. Nairobi County Commissioner Flora Moroa said the money will enable them give their children a befitting send-off. In the meantime, residents of a Hindu trading center in Ivasha are up in arms over an increase in the number of fatal accidents along the Nairobi Nakuru Highway. The residents now want Kenya National Highway Authority to erect speed bumps or fly over on the busy highway with the area recording eight fatal accidents in the last one month. Kilio chetu ni kufikisha kwa serikali kuu na serikali dogo hili tuese kusaidiwa kwa jiri atuna uwezo na malirio yetu kama ikiwezekana furayova ijengu wa sababu tulikuwa tumelia in another development, residents of Lamo and human rights activists are urging the national government to do away with the numerous roadblocks on the Lamo Witu Gerson Road. They argue the roadblocks are creating the bad impression that Lamo is unsafe, which scares away tourists. 
Elsewhere, permanent secretary in the State Department for Broadcasting and Telecommunication, Esther Koimet, says the government is committed to promoting creativity among the youth even as she challenged the young people to take advantage of institutions that will sharpen their skills. The PS spoke during the launch of State of the Art Film Hub in Bomet County. The government is therefore working to remove barriers to local content creation and distribution such as exorbitant classes classification fees and broadcasting fees. The objective is to promote the production of local digital content and create employment for citizens. Finally, Kiambu County Governor Dr. James Nyoro says the county is witnessing more COVID new cases than in the previous waves, saying it was high time for citizens to resort back to preventive measures issued by the government. We are experiencing an upside of COVID cases more than we ever anticipated as we talk we have about 134 COVID positive uh, COVID cases in our COVID center in Chigoni that's probably 30, 30 patients more than we experienced during the third wave Beatrice Getonyangetich Prime Edition very well, let's move across the borders and Tunisia's president Kai Said has sacked the Prime Minister Hichem Mechichi and suspended parliament after violent mass protests nationwide in the northmost country in Africa. The protests have been fueled by the long-standing public frustration over how the government has handled the recent spike in the COVID-19 cases. Safin Achieng Auma now reports. Clashes among rival groups continued on Monday in Tunisia following the move by President Kai Said to sack the Prime Minister Hishem Meshishi and suspend Parliament. Anger over the government's handling of a massive recent spike in COVID-19 cases has added to general unrest over the nation's economic and social turmoil. President Kai Said, who was elected in 2019, announced he was taking over. Said's supporters erupted in celebration, but his opponents in parliament immediately accused him of staging a coup. Rival groups threw stones at each other outside the legislature, which was barricaded by troops, preventing workers from entering some government buildings. In the early hours of Monday, the Speaker of Parliament, Rashid Ganoushi, was tried to get into the legislature in Tunis, but was blocked by those who supported Said's move. The recent coronavirus surge has fueled long-standing public frustration. The health minister was sacked last week after he bungled vaccination drive. For Prime Edition, I'm Safin Aching Oma. Very well, we're going to take a short break when we come back. The day's business and we'll also look at, uh, at what is happening in the world of sports. Stay with us. What does this number mean to you? A pack leader? A winner? Or just a number? To us, it means freshness, boldness, vibrancy and heritage. That's why at KBC Channel One, we make it easier for you to pop up your family entertainment to a fresh, exciting and colorful bouquet. Nissan Serena ndio hii na unaweza kuwa wewe ndio tunapikia simu kodi ya Nissan Serena ni NS alafu kisha kwenye amount ni 50 bob hii Nissan Serena tunakupatia na shilingi 50 kujiunga na quick bid ni rahisi ena kwenye Mpesa bonyeza paybill kisha weka business number 4032353 kwenye account weka kodi ya bidhaa unayotaka na bid yako ya chini zaidi kwa mfano TV16 kisha weka shilingi 22 kama idadi yako weka bid yako pia kwenye www.quickbid.co.ke kumbuka bid ya chini zaidi ya kipekee ndio ununua quick bid Zabora kwa bei ya chini.
Benger. Now, Kenya hopes that small businesses secure new markets and insights from the upcoming East African Community Micro Small Medium Enterprises Trade Fair to be held in Tanzania this December. Trade and Enterprise Development Cabinet Secretary Betty Miner says the government plans to sponsor 200 small businesses to the exhibition to position them of better for business and growth. Take a look. Challenges in accessing markets is among the key issues that small businesses face. The government is banking on the annual East African Community MSME Street Fair slated to be held in Mwanza, Tanzania this year, December, to help address this through opening up of new markets frontiers and bridging technological gaps. The East African community has recognized the centrality of micro and small enterprises and the need to build uh, the capacity of SMEs for production and to participate in regional integration. They project that the expo would help 800 small businesses develop new regional business linkages and gain insights to better position themselves for growth. I also want to encourage the other private sector uh, memberships who are not necessarily represented here today, the Kenya Association of Manufacturers, the Kenya National Chamber of Commerce, the Kenya Private Sector Alliance, uh, all who have SME components within their membership to also work to support uh, their agencies and their, and their, and their companies in participating. The government plans to sponsor over 200 small businesses to the exhibition with the hope of helping them improve the quality of their products and make them more competitive. This government support is intended to boost markets for goods that are made in Kenya. Betty says this is among efforts to build the capacity of small businesses to take advantage of the demand for goods and services created by the African continental free trade area. Brian Munyoki, Prime Edition. Now, still on trade, the Middle East and Gulf regions are emerging as key markets for Kenyan goods. Trade experts say Kenya is keen to leverage on the upcoming Dubai 2021 Expo to grow three times the value of exports to the Gulf region from the current 55.5 billion shillings to over 150 billion shillings by the end of next year. Kenya's exports account for a mere 0.1% of the 53 trillion shillings Gulf region total inputs. Over time, Kenya's total exports has more than doubled in value from 275 billion shillings in 2007 to 642 billion shillings in 2020. Imports, on the other hand, have also gone up by 650 billion shillings to 1.6 trillion shillings in 2020. Despite the growth, the trade deficit has been widening with the import value being three times the exports. The balance of trade deficit has widened from 375 billion shillings to a record of 1 trillion shillings in 2020. Within this period, Uganda and Pakistan topped the list of destinations for Kenyan goods. Among Kenya's top 10 export markets, there was increased exports to South Sudan, which grew by 10.5 billion shillings, followed by UK, which is United Kingdom, by 9.9 .9 billion shillings. There was also a notable growth in exports markets such as Uganda, Germany, Tanzania and Egypt. This was attributable to restrictions occasioned by COVID-19 in the traditional import sources and easy sourcing from Kenya when other markets closed their borders. Exports to UAE and Pakistan, however, declined due to the lockdown and other restrictive measures occasioned by COVID-19 that hindered exports, non-tariff barriers and logistical challenges. Trade experts say the Middle East and Gulf regions are emerging as good markets for Kenyan goods due to high disposable income, the region's high affinity for foreign products and diversity, which presents Kenya an immense potential to increase shipment of tea, coffee and legumes. The upcoming Dubai Expo 2021 is seen as an opportunity for Kenya to grow exports to the Gulf region from the current 55.5 billion shillings to 150 billion shillings by the end of 2022. Now to fishing, illegal fishing and the use of unlicensed equipment is threatening fish stocks in Lake Naivasha. 
Fish production at the Fresh Water Lake in Nakuru County has dropped by 60%. That is according to the Kenya Marine and Fisheries Research Institute. Nakuru County is mulling over a proposal to ban fishing in Lake Naivasha. Take a look. One of the largest freshwater lake in Rift Valley is facing a bleak future. Years of unregulated fishing and pollution is threatening the future of Lake Naivasha. Fish production has dropped by more than 60% in the lake with the government planning to impose a ban on fishing at the lake. Na ile scientific report ambayo tutapata kutoka Kemfri ya kusema ni boti ngapi ambazo zinaweza kukaa katika lake ile tunaita carrying capacity ndio tusifanye kazi ambayo ni unsustainable experts have warned that the catch could drop further in the coming months due to uncontrolled fishing mainly in breeding zones according to the Kenya Marine and Fisheries Research Institute the most affected species is tilapia with traders forced to double their prices as demand continues to rise Nakuru County Executive Committee Dr Immaculate Maina is also attributing the crisis to the high number of unemployment. Naivasha Sub-County Commissioner Mutua Kisuli noted the ongoing crackdown in the lake targeting illegal fishermen had borne fruits. The Chiaman Lake Naivasha Boat Owners Association David Kilo warned that the fishery sector in the lake was facing collapse due to the use of undersized fishing nets. Na nafikiria mumeona hata vijana wakijaribu kuandamana ili kusema kwamba uh, wale coast guards waondolewe. Brian Munyoki, Lunchtime News. Well, and that story by Brian brings to a close business news for tonight. We're going to take a short break and when we come back Richard Munga will be bringing you the sports. My name is Carol Jenka. Have a good night. Kwa machine yangu naitwa Eric kama unaweza nita mogaka mimi ni socha kasi yangu eh, ni kuchunga mali ya wenyewe hakuna kitu uko uchungu sana kama mtu kupotesa especially pesa ameweka kwa nyumba ama ofisini na hizo kesi ukuwa ngumu sana kufuatiliwa na waomba wenzangu eh? kama vile mimi ufanya weka pesa yako kwa panga account juu KDIC imekuwa kikisia iko safe weka kitu kwa pang Be sure check out for a KDIC sticker in your banking hall KDIC protecting your deposits <laughs> Yes, and then it's spoil. Yes, and then fanya kila kitu. Yes, everything. Yes, yes, yes. Can we now deal with the problem, Kate? Uzuni kuniondokea mimi ni urongo. He is my son, Kate. Lakini amekunywa dawa zake. Hajapewa dawa. Hajapewa dawa. Sasa tapona vipi?
Well, good evening. Thank you for joining us for tonight's edition of KBC Sports with me, Richard Munga. Now, Kenya rugby's chances of qualifying for the Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games quarterfinals received a huge blow after the innocent Miu coached side lost 14-5 to African rival South Africa. Their second loss following a 19-14 defeat to USA earlier today. Shijan will now hope to register a decent result in the last Pool C match against Ireland, who lost 19-17 to USA hours after falling 33-14 to South Africa. push in terms of qualifying for the knockouts so so right now I think the, the only task at hand is to, to win the, the last game uh, so that we can be able to qualify and Kenya will be hopeful to bag one of the three slots when they line up against Ireland tomorrow morning at 5 a.m. local time in Kenya returned to the Shukazi Park on Thursday to face another Pool D favorite USA the Americans beat Latvia 2-1 in another Pool D match all still on matters. Olympics, the Kenyan trio of Beatrice Chepkoech, Ivan Kiyang and Purity Kirui will be eyeing to clinch Kenya's maiden gold in the women's 3,000 meter steeplechase at the Tokyo Olympics. Also, at the men's 800 meters is expected to produce uh, fireworks at the Tokyo Olympics with the Kenyan team ready and up to the task to hunt for glory. 3,000 meter steeplechase at the Olympic Games in 2008, a Kenyan athlete is yet to win a gold medal, with Yunis Jepkorir and Haivin Kiang coming closer, bagging silver in 2008 and 2016 respectively. Kiang insists that through teamwork, the Kenyans can indeed dominate the race. I think uh, I can tell at the moment my, my shape is not bad. Uh, but now as we are heading to Tokyo, I think now we go and work as a team to attain the best results. Also, Michael Saruni, Emmanuel Korir and Ferguson Rutich have been tasked with continuing Kenya's dominance in the 800 meters at the Olympic Games that extends for over two decades. U.S.-based Michael Saruni said he is ready to carry the Kenyan flag as he makes his debut at the Games as Kenya enters the post-Rudisha era. Kwangu naona team Z Michael Strong and uh, na kila mmoja wetu anaweza kujishindia uh, medali na uh, tunaomba Mungu atuweseshe tupe nguvu siku hiyo tu ngane semis hits uh, tufike kwa final na tutarajie mazuri so far so good um i would say like i'm 90% i've not reached there where i want but I'm healthy, no injuries, training has been going on good. I've been hitting the times I want and um, I feel just good in general. And two other matters, Nakuru-based speedster Onkar Singh Rai has been named the Sports Personality of the Month of June 2021 following a stellar drive in the iconic WRC Safari Rally Kenya. Also, Kenya's Carl Flash Tundo clocked two hours 7.36 minutes to win the third leg of the FIA African Rally Championship Series in Tanzania. Driving a Volkswagen Polo R5 and navigated by Briton Drew Starrock, Onka Rai achieved the feat after winning WRC 3 class. Onka also scored World Rally Championship points in a credible seventh overall place. Karan Patel and Carl Tund also scored WRC points in eighth and ninth positions. Onka beat five other nominees, namely beach volleyballer Braxide Zagala, 100 meter sprinter Ferdinando Manyala, mid distance runner Faith Kipiagon, former half marathon world record the Jofrika Moror and basketballer Medina Court. Onkarai, it's really, you made us proud and we are really delighted to be part of this initiative. Our part here is to encourage you and the rally drivers and motivate other sports personalities in the country. Honestly, it's, a, it's an honor and a privilege to be given this award. Um, it's taken, you know, years and years of hard work and, and, and training. Um, and you know the two people behind that were, were obviously my brother Tej um, and my Mzee uh, Jesse Rai. So 
they've done a lot um, to to bring me up to the level that I am. Meanwhile, Kenya's car flash Tundo clocked two hours, 7.36 seconds, 7.36 minutes to win the third leg of the FIA Africa Rally Championship Series in Tanzania. His compatriot Karen Patel emerged second in two hours, 10.35 minutes, as Jeremy Wahome, also Kenyan, finished fifth in two hours, 22.58 minutes. The win extends Tundo's lead in the Continental Series, whose last three gongs are well kept by another Kenyan, Manville Barian. Now to football, champions Gor Mahe dropped points for the seventh consecutive match after losing 1-0 to Linz Stars in an FKF Premier League match played today. Today's loss, the 10th this season, leaves Kogalo 7th on the log on 40 points after 26 matches, while Ulinzi is now 10th on 37 points. In yet another match played today, Bitcoin United beat Nairobi City Stars 2-1 to go 11th on the standings on 35, on 35 points, rather, uh, three points behind sixth placed City Stars. Uh, <laughs> Inafaa kabla hata tufungwe lazima tujitume ndio tupate bao lakini ukiangalia wachezaji wangu leo imekuwa ni kama tulingoja e, ulinzi wapate hiyo bao and then ndio tuanze kujituma na unapota siku hizi eh timu nyingi sana zinajua ku defend hata kama ni bao moja wanajua ku defend sana na ulinzi ni wazuri sana ku defend so hapo ndio makosa tumefanya Finally, Adam Pitti wrote his name into the history books once again as he powered to 100 meters breaststroke gold in Tokyo in a time of 57.37 seconds to become the first British swimmer to defend an Olympic title. The old record holder blew away the competition to win Britain's first gold medal at the Games. Well, that's all the time we have for sports, but always remember for all the stories that we had for you tonight, well, every other night too, as well as more sports updates, you can always log on to our website www.kbc.co.ka, uh, click onto the sports category, or you can visit our YouTube page, of course, uh, that is KBC Sports for all the sports updates. Well, that does it uh, from, the, from KBC's uh, sports desk. I'm Richard Munga, and maybe... Uh, Hitting it back to uh, Tom. Anything uh, really else to add on that? Since uh, I saw you, you know, your face dropped once you had, uh, you know, that gurmahe drop. Kugalo. So. <laughs> Kugalo. But yeah. it's okay. Uh -huh. It's okay. As a fan, what's Good. your take on that, of course? Because uh, Gurmahe has been winless in seven matches now. <laughs> I know where you're headed. I you promise I'm not enjoying this. Listen, listen. <laughs> the sportsman spirit, eh? uh -huh. there are bad days. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Or it's bad okay. weeks. It's okay, or bad weeks. For you guys. Yeah. Okay. So okay. sometimes you lose, sometimes you win. <laughs> well, that's it for me to have a good night. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, there's always there's always the team in the back end eh, that makes this bullet impossible. So uh, on their behalf I wanna thank you all for for watching, including our sign language interpreter, Lensa Odingo, of course. My name is Tom Boya. I will be back tomorrow night. Thank you. Good night and God bless.